You're gonna make it. You're gonna make your business the best one in town. One day you had a billion dollar idea. Open up a pet store and sell adorable monsters to dungeon lords. It's too good to fail. But unfortunately, you've only got your family in one dusty cage to start with. I guess it's time to clean this place up. In Dungeon Pets, designed by Vlada Chavatil and published by CGE, you are a pet store specializing in vicious and adorable monsters. Hi everybody, my name is Nick Murphy of the Brothers Murph, here with Board Game Geek, and this In Focus is sponsored by the Board Game Geek store. So, let's gather up some pets, grab a broom or two, and let's go In Focus on Dungeon Pets. Dungeon Pets is a worker placement pet management game. Each player will get a pet shop and their family of imps. Players will secretly arrange their imps in groups behind their screen, adding gold to bolster their numbers. Once all players have done so, they will reveal and the biggest group of imps will activate first, then the second, and so on. There are many things an imp can do to improve their store. They can grab a shiny new cage to house a feisty pet, or maybe they want to upgrade an existing cage. Pets need to eat, so send a group to go grab some food, or maybe a fancy artifact will help. More workers would be nice, so how about you send your imps to invite some of your cousins to join the family business? While you're nearby the hospital, why not grab your Uncle Larry who got mauled the other day? And then send Aunt Janine to go judge that exhibition that's coming up later, knowing that she'll rig the contest in your favor. But this game is ultimately all about the pets, so you should definitely send a group of imps to go get a brand new adorable man-killing death machine. After all groups of imps have been placed, players will have to take care of their pets. Each pet will show colored bars on the bottom of their dial. These are the monster's needs, and cards matching these colors will need to be assigned to the pet. In the case of this cute little monstrosity, a player will need to assign a green card, a yellow card, and a red card from their hand. The needs cards have a variety of things that the pet will require. A pet may need food, may get sick, want to play, need to lash out physically or magically, or they may need to poop. No one said being a pet owner is easy, okay? A player will choose from their hands which needs to assign to the pet and then will have to carry out said needs. For every food assigned to the pet, they will have to discard one food of the pet's preference. If the pet lashes out physically, you will compare the strength of the outburst to the strength of the cage. If the pet exceeds the cage's limit, the pet escapes and a player either has to let them go or send imps to go catch it. And that's how Uncle Larry ended up in the hospital. If its magical attack exceeds the cage's magical threshold, mutations will be put onto the pet, and if a pet has two mutations, it disappears into another dimension and is gone forever. If a pet wants to play, players will have to assign an imp to the cage to play with the pet. If a pet needs to poop, manure tokens will be added to the cage. And finally, if a pet gets sick, you will add the amount of sick needs to the amount of manure in the cage, and if this exceeds two, the pet will receive a suffering cube. If a pet isn't fed, played with, or gets sick, it will suffer. And if it suffers enough, it will die. This game just got sad. But hey, contests are fun. After needs have been met, an exhibition will take place. Exhibitions allow players to show off their pet. An exhibition may ask for a player to show a pet that eats a lot or is very angry or magical. The player who assigns the most needs of the desired type to the pet will win the contest, unless Aunt Janine rigged it in which their pet automatically starts with two points higher than everyone else. The winner of the contest will score the most points with points being given to second, third, and fourth. And finally, it's time to sell. Dungeon Lords will be coming through town every round looking for pets to buy. Every Dungeon Lord will have specific things they're looking for in a pet and other things that they are not looking for. For example, Farmer Troll here wants a pet that eats, poops, and gets mad, but doesn't like pets that get sick or are suffering. Whereas Dungeon Granny just wants to spoil her pet, so she wants one that eats a ton and gets sick, but doesn't like magical or suffering pets. Players will look at the needs they assign to their pets and determine if they can or want to sell to a Dungeon Lord. If they do, they will count up the needs assigned to the pet that the Lord desires, subtracting any needs the Lord doesn't want, and then will gain points depending on how well they met the Lord's wishes. Then the players will reset and go again, and at the end of the sixth round, the pet store with the most points will win. Don't let its fun, cute theme fool you. This is a big game with excruciating decisions. Figuring out how to group your imps and where to send them on the board is hard enough. 
But taking care of your pet's needs while also trying to cater them to exhibitions and dungeon lords is an incredibly difficult balance to manage. So if Dungeon Pets seems like a game you'd like to sink your teeth into, consider checking out its page on BoardGameGeek.com. There you can find reviews, forums, and you can join the discussion. Until next time, I have been Nick Murphy. We are here with Board Game Geek, and we've been going in focus on Dungeon Pets. Have a great day.